Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the North Kesteven series. This is a large Lincolnshire district centred around the town of Sleaford. There's 75 parishes here, so let's take a look at one of them. Welcome back to North Kesteven, everybody. And if you watched last week's episode here in this district of Lincolnshire, you'll know exactly where I am. I left off the Navenby episode right on the boundary with today's parish. And as you can see, we're going to be heading into the parish of Wellingore. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Where Navenby left off, Wellingore will continue. Welcome to another pretty North Kesteven village can join now to Navenby thanks to modern developments, but wants a separate settlement in its own right. The name Wellingore is thought to derive from the Old English for ridge at the place with the spring or stream. Well, as we know already, that was pretty much the raison d'etre for all the cliff villages, was it not? Unlike Navenby, Wellingore is actually smaller than it was 150 years ago. In 1801, there was a resident population of 559 and this grew to a peak of 943 in 1861. However, at the 1971 census, there were just 618 people recorded here. Most of Wellingore is a conservation area. In fact, it's covered by the oldest in North Kesteven. There's no shortage of attractive old buildings, mostly built of limestone, but with a few built of mellow old bricks. It's all very pleasing. Wellingore's biggest and most well-known landmark is Wellingore Hall, which was lived in by the Neville family from Oban. For a time, it became an agricultural college, and now it's a collection of offices and apartments. Wellingore also once had a windmill, and together with an old filled-in quarry, it now forms the windmill field, where our walk begins. To the south of the village, there was also an airfield, in use during wartime. There's loads more, so let's get walking and see it all, shall we? As you will have seen at the end of the Navenby episode, Wellingore has an old windmill, and that's our first landmark. The village's original 18th century windmill was a two-storey building and five more floors were added in 1854. It was a working mill until the 1930s. It lost its sales during World War II after being considered a German air raid target. As well as the windmill, Wellingore also had a quarry, and it was right next to it. In fact, we're stood on it. The quarry mined stone, mainly used in building and road repair. It was closed, filled in and grassed over in the mid-1960s. This structure commemorates the roles played by the quarry and the windmill in Wellingore's industrial past. This millstone was located at an old mill nearby and the supporting limestone blocks come from a quarry in Metheringham. Okay, once beyond the windmill, you're then at Wellingore Garage, which you can see behind me. That could well be my stop for food later. 
uh, considering it's also a shop as well as a petrol station. Now the rest of Wellingore, it appears quite squashed on the map. If you look at the map, there's sort of a, a road that runs at the bottom of the village and then you've got Navenby at the north and between the two it's kind of a, a squish job <laughs> for Wellingore. But it, it does have plenty of other fantastic landmarks including Wellingore Hall which we'll see towards the end of this video. After this garage though we're going to take a right turn and head towards Wellingfield. Next we come to the village cross which has a good example of the stepped base of medieval standing crosses. It's never been restored and has been a public monument and amenity from medieval times to the present day. Next to it are the Jubilee Gardens which commemorate Elizabeth II's Diamond Jubilee. It contains some interesting wood carvings. This is all situated next to a bus shelter. Now I bet you can't guess what number bus serves Wellingore, can you? Well, if you said the number one, you'd be spot on. This bus shelter was built in 2009, according to the plaque on its side. Here's the Red Lion, a traditional stone-built village pub, which has been refurbished within the last few years. A few more steps and the old red phone box comes into view. Next, it's a right turn as we start to hit some residential areas. Wellingore is an attractive village. Many of its older houses are built in the local limestone, with newer ones in between. Wellingore was the first village in North Kesteven to be designated a conservation area. It's had that status since 1971. This is West Street and we're on our way to the Memorial Hall, built to remember those who lost their lives at war. The original hall was a converted wartime Nissen hut. The modern building is a replacement, opened in 1968. So here is the uh, Memorial Hall then. It's this building right here. And as you can see, it stands in front of a playing field. There's a playground over there. If I go this way though, I can show you it's a little bit better because there's a bit more room to see. So there's the hall across this car park. And there we have the playing field right behind the hall. There's also another building over here and that is the Wellingore Scout Centre. It's all here, it's all here. It's well served, this village, with community facilities. And while we're on the subject of community, the Memorial Hall is also the venue for the Summer Fete. Now, obviously today is the 3rd of August. You would have seen that right at the beginning. And this took place on the 5th of August. I'm saying that in the past tense because this will be out long, long, long after this has happened. Did any of you go to this? Was it any good? Let's see some of the things that are on the bill. Rides from 12 till 5 p.m., races from 1 till 4, a tug of war at 4.30, bar and gin bar, and bands 5 p.m. until late. And the best bit about it, free entry. Let me know if you went to this, people, and how good it was. Now we're on our way to the village green via Barnes Lane, another stone street typical of the cliff villages. Although small, the green is one of the most immaculately kept I've ever seen. It has a few noteworthy features too. One of them is an old pump which according to its ironwork was manufactured in Kilmarnock in Scotland. The big house facing the green is the Manor House. It's 18th century and is one of 37 listed buildings in Wellingore. Between all the stone cottages and listed buildings is the only working farm in the main village, Home Farm. It's located along Vicarage Lane. Further down the road and out of shot is the 1797 built Doughty's Cottage. It's the only listed building on the street, which begs the question, why aren't any of these? Who knows? That brings us to the A607, where there are two old shop frontages. Wellingore's only shop now is at the garage. 
And on the other side is Home Farm House, one of the oldest properties in Wellingore, dating back to the mid 16th century. Okay, now we've got to Hall Street and we will be seeing Wellingore Hall in a short while. But before that, we have the church. And here it is with its nice tall spire. Even though you can't see it at the moment, I'll just adjust the camera so that you can. There you go. Let's go in through the gate and have a look at this. Wellingore's church is dedicated to All Saints. It was potentially a church of high status in pre-conquest Lincolnshire. It was mentioned in the Registrum Antiquissimum in the 11th century, which makes references to King William I. The church remained under the patronage of the Dean and Chapter of Lincoln Cathedral until at least 1856. Now we're inside. This one has some features dating to the 12th century, as well as some perpendicular ones. All Saints was restored between 1878 and 1881. It has a medieval tomb with recumbent figures of a knight and his lady. The church also has a few bits of wartime history, making reference to the now closed RAF Wellingore. Here's the impressive east window. Both this and the chancel arch date to the late 13th or early 14th centuries. Almost completely hidden behind this organ is a stone wall monument to Charles Wingfield, who died in 1575. So there are two things that I want to talk about. One of them here is a tomb which has on top of it some fabulous effigies. This looks like a knight with a chainmail on, potentially. Awesome carving. There's a lady next to him as well. I wonder who they are. Might be something to do with Wellingore Hall, which of course we haven't got to yet, so we may discover who they are in due course. The other thing, on the side of the church here along the wall, there's a massive timeline which covers, according to this, 950 years of history. Now, of course, I'm not going to read it all out because it would take me quite a while, but it, it starts at uh, the far end over there with the Doomsday Book in 1086 and then works its way all the way through to the year 2000. So if we have a look at the most recent uh, bits of history, let's see. Uh, let's start with 1917. Wellingore Airfield is opened as a Royal Naval Air Station. Uh, the Veredos de depicting the Last Supper is placed behind the high altar in the church. Uh, Wellingore Airfield fully operational. This is all war stuff. The Memorial Hall is opened in 1968. Wellingore's designated a conservation area in 71. All Saints becomes part of the United Benefits of Grafo in 96, and the Millennium Banner is hung to celebrate life in the village in 2000. Now the Millennium Banner is over here. It's on the other side of the church. There it is. Let's uh, make our way across to it, through the pews. Careful not to bang into them. There we go. There is the Millennium Banner. Fabulous! After seeing all the church's references to RAF Wellingore, here's a special section about it. Like RAF Calder Grange, it was a fighter relief landing ground, initially for RAF Cranwell, before later doing the same job for RAF Digby. The airfield was originally opened in 1917 as a Royal Naval Air Service Station called Wellingore Heath. By the winter of 1939, it was fully operational and consisted of two grass runways, a concrete perimeter track and several hangars. It didn't last long after the war and it was closed in 1947. The station was used as a prisoner of war camp before being handed back to the local landowner. Many of the original buildings, including the control tower, have been demolished. In 1940, Guy Gibson was stationed at Wellingore. He flew from here to Cardiff for his wedding. And in 1941, John Gillespie McGee Jr., author of the famous aviation poem High Flight, took off from Wellingore on his final flight, in which he was killed. The largest and easily the most magnificent building in Wellingore is without a doubt this. Welcome to Wellingore Hall. Wellingore Hall was the 18th century home of the Nevilles after they abandoned their ancestral home at Oborn. 
The family returned to Oborn after World War II, and now the hall is a combination of offices and apartments. The central part of the hall is the oldest, dating from 1780. Lateral additions were added in 1800 and again in 1876. Between 1891 and 1899, the hall was used as an agricultural college, which relocated from Aldercar Hall in Derbyshire. Named Wellingore Agricultural College and with quite a liberal view to education, it housed around 30 boys. One famous student was Philip Henry George Goss, who went on to become a GP and a writer on natural history. And the hall also had a Roman Catholic church dedicated to St Augustine. Let's move away now into the village centre. Okay, and that leaves us really with just one section left here in Wellingore, which is beginning at this building right here, or should I say pair of buildings, because on the right you've got an old uh, Wesleyan Chapel, and on the left you've got the associated Wesleyan Sunday School, which has got a date stone of 1925. Next we have another pub. This is the Marquis of Granby, which is located right on the path of the Viking Way. Across the road is a building with an old Brook Bond tea advert on its wall. This is Wellingore's former post office. Also on its wall we have a parish notice board, and that's Wellingore in the books. Mark it off, 68 to go in North Kesteven. Both of those buildings stand on the corner of Millgate, which is where we're going next, towards a set of bungalows. We can take a shortcut here through them. This is Neville Walk, named after the Neville family of Wellingore Hall. It leads to Cumberland Avenue, which runs back to Pottergate, or Pottergate Road, as I should have called it in Navenby. It looks like the locals have set up this communal little pallet for any stuff they want to free cycle. What a cracking idea! Soon after, Cumberland Avenue becomes houses. Now I'm sure the locals will be quick to point out one street I haven't walked down. That would be the curiously named Eggshell Alley. No worries, I've got it covered. Here's a picture of it. And here we are back at Boundary Paddock where I began the Navenby episode some two hours ago, or in your case, two weeks ago. <laughs> Time for me to move on to the next one. I do hope you've enjoyed the parish of Wellingore. I know I have. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below, as well as my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out.